All right, so assuming that all intended attendees are here, um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'm Ken Cole, the chair of the uh, Finance Committee. And um, <clears throat> first of all, I would uh, like to kind of set the table for uh, anybody that's not familiar with what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, this is the first of four scheduled meetings um, so far, scheduled that is, of the committee as we begin the fiscal year 2022 departmental budget review process. Um, it's our intent for the committee to personally meet with all of the department heads to listen to their explanations of the budget requests and to have a dialogue with them if necessary with any questions that might arise during those presentations. Notification of the subsequent meetings and the scheduled department invitees are to be published on my town government website. As of this date, the scheduled meeting date, dates in addition to tonight's, to tonight's meeting are February 24, where we've already scheduled the Council on Aging, um, the Public Library and the Fire Department, as well as March 1 and March 3, with the remaining inv invitees to be posted accordingly. Um, tonight's scheduled presenters um, are the Board of Assessors, the Town Clerk, and the Police Department. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce the members of the fin uh, Finance Committee for those who have not um, been involved in any previous meetings um, and their titles. Rachel Dion is uh, Vice Chair. Mary Syriac is the clerk, and Barbara Simbroski is a standing member. Um, not to be left out, we also have the uh, select board liaison member, uh, Francine Tishman. She is a, a non-voting member, however. <clears throat> um, I believe that that is, um, all that I have for setting the table. Um, that being done, I would move right into the um, next item on the agenda, which is the f uh, fiscal year 22 budget reviews. Um, and I would, I would move to uh, the town clerk, Lucy. Yep, I'm here. Okay. And I sent an uh, email to the Finance Committee um, requesting that I um, be put on a different day's agenda. Um, I have additional information that I need to um, put together for you all. So I'm asking for to be put on a, another day, if possible. Um, I haven't had a chance to speak with the other members of the committee, but um, mm -hmm. I think at this point, February 24 looks like it's um, pretty pretty well been booked already. Mm -hmm. um, yep. and I, so I think it's probably best that it be either the March 1st or the March 3rd meeting. That's fine. March 1st is fine. Okay. That's fine. I, I, so, I have, you know, most of it together, but there's some final information that I want to put together. I, and I just found out on Friday about this. So um, I would like to do this next Monday. Okay. All right. Understood. And we will get back to you to confirm that it is the first. Okay. And I don't know if you have to vote on it or anything, but I appreciate that. Okay. All righty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. All right, moving right along. <laughs> um, that brings us to the Board of Assessors. Who Hi, is who, April who's, West? I'm the chair. Hi, April. Hi. Um, we've. The floor is yours. I'm sorry, the floor is mine. <laughs> oh, goody. I love to talk. Um, <laughs> Um, we've given you both what, what you requested, both a budget A and a budget B or budget one and budget two. 
Um, budget one is um, adding a 2% cost of living onto what um, our principal assessor is currently um, earning. And it is also um, adding back in the necessary hours that our, our new uh, assistant assessors um, was hired for. We um, need, I believe it's 12 hours a week at $15 an hour. Um, and last year's fiscal year's um, budget only reflects um, a partial year of having that position filled. And then um, Martha has office expenses and I don't have the budget in front of me, I apologize, but um, our usual things, we've increased the uh, office expenses, which we've given uh, an explanation for um, based on going back to a normal setting in our office with um, having continuing ed classes and the board um, being able to uh, get more experience and more education. And I think our vision software is going up a couple hundred dollars. So that's budget one. Does anybody have questions on that? Yeah, any questions? I do have a question. Ken, I have a question. Yes, Mary. Yes. Uh, I seem to recall that the instructions that were given by the select board was that scenario one or budget number one was to be level funded and just to include your contractual increases. So my question is, since we're including a 2% COLA for the principal assessor and then a, um, an increase for the administrative, is there employment contracts for those, those individuals? Because the instructions again indicate it's level funding and we only include contractual increases. For your first budget? So um, for the assistant assessor position, yes. We, um, we filled a position that we hired for 12 hours a week at $15 an hour. Um, we are, so that is what we put in, in, the, in budget one. Okay. And the principal assessor, what's the current hourly rate for that job? That's a great question. Martha? Martha. <laughs> 25, 20, 20, is it? Is it 2520? 2519. 2519. So that's the current hourly rate. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thanks, Janet. 2519, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. And how many hours a week? Is it 30 hours a week? 31. 31. Martha, 31. I think that's in one of the handouts that we provided as well. Uh, the other question I have is on training. Um, there was a listing. Um, as part of your notes, it included uh, professional development. Is there one that is required mandatory training to maintain your accreditation or certification? Is that on the list? Martha, do you want to answer that? You're muted, Martha, just so you know. What was that? I just wanted Martha, Martha to know muted. she's muted so that. Oh, okay. So the second do document where we did okay. the, the breakdown, right, of everything. Martha, can you answer okay. the So my hourly rate is 25 mm -hmm. And I have classes I need to take to keep my designation. Mm -hmm. I have all the class listed that I needed to take to get my mass accredited assessor does it and I have to continue on with classes and credits to continue with my designation. 
the MAAO assessor school that's listed on uh, one of the. That's the I'm sorry. It's what? the organization that um, accredits that I have my A. So it's the Mass Assess Mass Accredited Assess Association. MAA organization. Sorry. All of the assessors take that training or, or required to take that training? To keep their accreditation. Yes. If they've been accredited or certified yeah. as Martha is, then they have to continue with their education. Yep. And that's an annual requirement? For your accreditation? Uh, the, well, I think three years, three years that you have to continue with the credits to maintain your nation. I'm sorry. Um, um, I had a, I have a question. Well, we haven't got to budget two yet, so I'll hold that. Um, staying within budget one, it talks about the cyclical inspections. This is just a curiosity question uh, from my standpoint. Yep. The budget. Uh, enables approximately 112 parcels to be inspected. How many parcels are there? Yes. How many parcels are there? There are 3,025 parcels. And we're required by Massachusetts law to do 100, uh, do, do the whole 3,000, right, Martha, in a period of time. So the target is 112 annually to get to that. Yes meet that requirement. Every parcel has to be inspected in your period. So, so it's been inspected in the past five years. We don't have to, we don't have to inspect it. So it's a cyclic. So once you're up um, and we haven't visited the property, we are mandated by the to visit that property. So it's not going to be every parcel and property gets inspected in uh, that period of time. It's just, it, Every parcel has to be inspected uh, at least once in a tier cycle. Okay, and, and so if there are three three thousand, over what period of time do all three thousand have to be reinspected? Have to have that met uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, they put off for twenty twenty, so we have to have it met by twenty twenty five. 2020. 2025. 2026, sorry. 2026, okay. Yeah. So that's... Um. A combination of using our and myself. Yeah. So obviously my, I'm not included in that cyclical so we're able to get more, but I can't do it alone. Right. I don't mean to belabor this, but 112 per year for six or seven years certainly doesn't come out to 3,000. Okay, I think what Martha just well, said- we're just trying to keep our herself. budget. Yeah. So Martha does some herself, yep. and then we hire bishops and sons to do um, at least 100 to 112 per year because we don't have any more budget to go beyond that. So we fill in the gaps. Okay, got it. Any other questions on the uh, first level budget? Can I just add a, a something for, I know that take what April has already said about the assistant assessors yep. to the assessor. Last year during our crazy budget time, we went on a month to month and then the assistant um, resigned. So we had an opening at budget time. So at that moment, we were not going to have that position at all. It was cut from the budget in order to make the required um, fi financial needs of the town. So when we did that, um, and then I think when they got the more information from the state, we were able to reinstate that position. So it should be a 12 month position, but because of the you know, timing of the year and that it was eliminated from the budget and then it was reinstated around October, November. That's why the budget reflects 
not a full 12 month period. So I don't, I don't know if that clarifies Mary at all or. No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> we ready for budget two? Yes. Okay. So um, you are working with a uh, relatively new board of assessors. Um, I'm in my second, starting my third year. Um, Darcy has joined us mid-year. Um, Janet is our longest term um, board member and Janet started in when, 2017? Yeah, I did a partial year um, filling in because the members of the board had resigned. So okay. came in partial of that year. So three years plus a few extra months. Okay. All the members of the board had resigned? Well, there was yeah. one member that was brand new and the other two members resigned after the election. So we were a one person board at the time. Yikes. That said, <clears throat> um, we're all sort of learning this position. And um, with this fiscal year budget request, we really um, started to take a look at um, where uh, the principal assessor's uh, position is scored with the town and also um, looking at other towns and openings and what um, those principal assessor positions are being offered out um, for uh, an hourly rate. Um, so we've done a lot of homework, we've done a lot of comparing and um, if you look at an assessor position, logically it kind of feels like it's supposed to be a clerical, but there is so much more involved in this position um, along with the education, the knowledge, the, um, the working with the, the people at the Mass DOR, there's just so much that goes into being a principal assessor. And the better the principal assessor uh, job, the better the person, the more experienced the person is who holds that principal assessor's job, the better the town is with the correct assessed values for the parcels and in raising tax revenue. <laughs> we, um, we are going to request with the PPPB a rescoring of this position to be a level, um, I'm sorry, she's current, the principal assessor's position is currently scored as a, as a unit two. We yeah. are asking the PPBB on Thursday to rescore this as a unit three, um, which is a professional position um, and you know, holds some administrative duties for other assistant positions within the department. So that is where we're coming up with our budget too. Um, we are using an hourly rate that we feel is uh, appropriate and compares to not only the uh, treasurer accountant position in town. I'm sorry, I've got to read my notes again. Um, and the, uh, the collector's position in town and the uh, corresponding administrative assistance in those departments. We feel that the three departments in town, assessor, finance, and collections are our financial team and that those positions should be filled at an hourly rate that is comparable to each other. And then we took the assistant assessor position and added in, um, at, brought it to a point where it also is comparing to um, another couple of positions that have been recently filled within our town. Um, and then adding another four hours to the position to take it to 16 hours a week, which would really help the assessor department stay on top of things, stay organized, and maybe even get a little bit ahead on some um, of the 
many duties that the office has to take care of. Okay, so that, so that increase then is principally additional work hours. Uh, for the assistant position, yeah. no, it's also, it's an increase to 1887 per hour. Okay. And adding four more hours a week to 16 hours a week. Yep, sorry. <laughs> and we're looking to fund the principal assessor position at 3114 an hour, keeping the 31 hours a week. And that's coming before the PQB on Thursday. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, April, in that regard? Um, just trying to look forward so that if um, in the future we are looking to fill a principal assessor position, we are competitive with um, other towns in our area. So we can uh, maintain um, the level of expertise that we currently have. Are the, uh, just out of curiosity, are the other towns in the, in the, uh, in the similar category, 30 hour a week positions? Yes. Yeah, we were trying to compare apples to apples. Yes. Good. There's a chart at the as the very last page of, of this document that compares the towns, the hours, the status, whether it's exempt or not exempt, uh, and salaries. You can you can see that it's pretty thorough. Okay. All right. Um, all right, well, that being said, uh, committee members, are there any questions that you have for uh, April or any other members of the I do, I have one more, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I have one more yeah. um, comment. Yeah. Is that in between fiscal year 2012 and fiscal year 2014, if we take an increase in the budget to bring this um, position up to the 50,000 plus a year, and the assistant up to, oh, I've lost my math. 15, um, 15 and change, April, I think it is. Yeah, 15 and change. We're going to be at the same level that we were funding this department in those fiscal years. Okay. Yeah, I mean, similar to the, um, Treasurer Collector's Office and the um, accountant, they all have assistant to the treasurer and they have an assistant to the accountant, assistant accountant, assistant treasurer and assistant accountant, right? We used to have a principal assessor and a, an assistant assessor. And due to some unfortunate circumstances from a health perspective, we lost the principal assessor, Martha filled in um, with many years of experience, she came to us um, and was hoping to be able to grow in, but I think it happened a lot faster for move into a higher level position on, because of someone's unfortunate health reasons. Martha stepped in and did the work of the principal assessor at a really non-competitive rate for a couple of years and then was promoted to principal assessor. And as April said, at the time it was scored um, as more of a clerical and if she has someone re reporting to her and she has a lot you know responsibility of 17 million dollars of revenue to make sure is accurately assessed then um we want to bring this position back to where it was as april said like seven years ago right so and if you look at the tax rate that we included and if what we tried to get whatever we could find i mean southampton you know has a very has a much lower tax rate compared to the other communities of comparable sizes. Um, I mean, East Hampton is obviously not, it's a city, so we don't really look at that as a comparable size, but um, it was in there as a neighboring town, but Williamstown, Dalton, Great Barrington, and <clears throat> Hopedale, um, 
and Hopedale's looking for an assessor right now and is looking to pay between 58 and 70,000. So that's a pretty accurate, um, as, you know, overview of the salary structure for that position, the value of that position. So that's my two cents, April, sorry. Marketplace is a little different though, isn't it? Hopedale, a little closer to Metro West. We're not asking for seventy thousand dollars. That's yeah. Correct. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm not saying that. I have one other question on that. Uh, getting back to the 2012, 2014, was that in the the forty hour range, or was that were you thirty hours back then as well? That's yeah, I don't think I don't think I, the office has ever been open in the four more than four days. So okay. during this during my time in town, anyway. Okay. Does anybody sense differently than that, Martha? Darcy, do you know? You have a couple yeah, of real as, as long as I can remember, yeah. the off town offices have always been closed on Fridays also. Okay. But again, we had an assessor, a principal assessor and an assistant assessor, I think at that point in time. Which and then you got- Within I'm sorry. They were uh, full time. I mean, time within the four day week. Both both positions were full time at that point, right? Martha, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and, and again, you know, we're our town. We're run by volunteers. We had a board that was evaporated. We had a new person come on board as chair and two fill-ins to do the best we could so that there were people there to support the office. And, um, you know, I think, unfortunately, we may have not fulfilled some positions that should have been filled at that time. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, <clears throat> rest of the committee, are you, uh, you comfortable? Any other questions? I'm good. No? No. All right. I guess we're good to go. Uh, okay. We, um, the Board of Assessors really appreciates you having all of us here so that we can take part in this. Um, and if there's anything we can do to help with giving more information uh, to whatever town committees or the town in itself, um, to, you know, fund this increase, we will be happy to help with that, so. And I just want to make sure you, everybody understands that Martha reports to the Board of Assessors. So when there was no board, it was a very, you know, inopportune time at that moment. She looked just in the mirror. <laughs> you know, just like the Board of Health, the director reports to the Board of Health, the assessor, principal assessor reports to the board of assessors. So um, I think that that's all I have to say. Thanks. <laughs> all right, thanks, Janet. Thank you, April. You're welcome. Nice to meet you all. Nice meeting you. Thanks, <laughs> Martha. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darcy. All right, moving on. Chief Illingsworth, thanks for your patience. <laughs> Welcome aboard. I don't hear you. How's now? That work now? Yes. Uh, yep. All right, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Floor is yours. So I just wanted to know, did you folks get the, the spreadsheets that I provided relative to my zero-based budgeting? Um, I provided Ed with about, uh, for the police department, a 25-page document starting from a zero-based budgeting, just to specifically articulate where everything was coming from. I just wanted to make sure you received that from both the police department and the communications department. 
Mary? Yes, we did. Okay. That's why his package is the thickest. I'm hoping, okay, I'm, and, I, and I'm hoping that'll make things a little bit easier when I'm explaining things, that's all, you know. Um, so as you may know, the police department personnel as well as the communications department personnel are all part of a collective bargaining agreement with contractual raises um, that are agreed upon by the town. So those contractual wages, uh, wages rather, those are um, involved in that, uh, including that spreadsheet for the two different budgets. The, the second budget request that includes um, some expenses beyond what was originally allocated last year. That includes, in, in, in my letter that I don't know if you received that letter as well, but that includes a uh, um, about $6,600 increase beyond level funding and equipment maintenance. And that is, I project a 5% increase in the department's commuter, uh, computer aided dispatch and record system. That was the same amount of uh, percentage increase last year. So I expect it this year. We haven't been notified yet of the increase, but I suspect it is. And that's a, an integral part of our, our uh, computer aided dispatch, police records, as well as the, um, the department's administrative uh, financial control for, for uh, the budget, as well as payroll. The, it also includes the um, annual maintenance fees for tasers, as well as a fingerprint scanner. I received a grant um, for tasers as well as a finger electronic fingerprint scanner uh, this fiscal year and next that this particular year that will include that that fee but next year it won't. Um, and that will uh, encompass about the $6,600 and the tasers we, we never have um, we never had them we uh, received three through a grant as well as the uh, fingerprint scanner which we we're always doing paper and ink so. Um, those were necessary equipment that uh, we were able to get through um, other funding other than the town's funding. Those were all, um, that was all equipment that I, I had put into my uh, five-year capital improvement plan, but fortunately, we were able to get uh, grants for them. There is one of the concerns I just want to explain is the police reform might have a profound impact on the police department. Uh, currently, uh, you know, I have, there's about fully staffed 10 full-time police officers, myself included, and we run about 10 part-time officers. The Reform Act, there's training standards that have to be met now, um, which may eliminate part-time officers. They have to reach a certain amount of training. So there might be a bridge academy. Once they did, this has not been determined yet. It's, it's in the legislation, but the actual standards have not been determined yet. And it could additionally, in order to maintain a, a part-time staff, it could additionally, additionally cost or at least require a bridge academy if the part-time officers are willing to do it between 250 to 500 extra hours to be certified as a police officer to work in the Commonwealth uh, beyond the full-time staff. So I'm presenting this as if this is not gonna be the requirement. Um, however, I, I do expect there to be some some effects in, in the, the, the Reform Act will have uh, on our department, in particular, the use of part-time staff. I'm hoping that's not the case, you know, and I, or I hope that they perhaps grandfather the current police officers in, part-time officers, and take into consideration all the years of training that they've had prior years, and it'll meet that 250 to 500 hours of additional training. That's what I'm hoping for, but again, it has not been established yet. How many part-time officers do you have, Chief? Currently, we have eight. Eight. Okay. That are actually, you know, working. We have one that's in training right now. Um, she, she's considered an auxiliary police officer. We don't pay for her because she's auxiliary. And and again, that this is just another complication that may arise with my budget is. Right now, we're able to, through the um, 1950 Civil Defense Act, we're able to hire auxiliary police officers and not pay them. They have to work under certain conditions, and we are able to bypass the training and pay, paying for them for training. 
but if they no longer allow auxiliary police officers because of lack of training, I will have to pay for all my training of the field training of, of, of police officers. So what happens is a police officer, a part-time police officer, you know, um, graduates from the academy, whether it's the part-time academy. Now, currently, they've now suspended all part-time academies in the Commonwealth. There are no part-time academies. So you have the full-time recruit academy, which would meet the standards of training, and then you have the part-time academy. Currently, they've suspended all part-time academies, so the hiring of part-time police officers from this point on may be from other departments if we can recruit them. Uh, but other than that, the newly trained officers at this point forward, unless things change or they determine the standards that need for the, uh, the training, we won't be able to have the part-time officers. So I, I am very much in limbo. So I'm, I'm presenting this budget as if everything is status quo. So how do they, how do the part-timers get trained? They would go to a, uh, a reserve intermittent police academy and they would, and then once they graduate there, depending on the police department's individual standards, they would then get field training within their department itself. So our department requires them to have a field training program. And the field training program is probably about 16 hours a week, because a lot of them already have full-time jobs. They're 16 hours a week, and it roughs roughly about uh, three months. We don't pay for them right now. They, 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 they are hired under that auxiliary um, police officer kind of uh, loophole that we can use so we don't have to pay them. And then once they complete their training, we hire them as part-time police officers. So, the, all right, so that the training cost, we would not be born with the training cost then. If there's a requirement for a, um, let, let, I, I don't know yet because they haven't established the standards, but there's an expectation that there's gonna be what they're considering a bridge academy between the part-time academy to the full-time academy. So all those part-time, current part-time officers throughout the Commonwealth are, um, there'll be a bridge academy to, to get them up to certification. Okay. So that could be up to 250 to 500 hours. So yes, if we were to maintain those employees, we'd actually have to pay for that. Okay. I don't even, I'm not even quite sure how that's gonna be feasible. Hmm. It, it, I, I, because the legislation went in relatively quick without a lot of forethought. There's a lot of communities out east as well as out west that rely on part-time staffing. For instance, the Cape Cod and the islands. Right. You know, uh, those populations swell over the summer and they sometimes, places like Dennis, uh, they may hire 50 to 60 part-time officers for, this, for the seasonal period. That is no longer going to be available for them. Mm. So I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be consideration for the standards, the training standards for the part-time police officers, but nothing has been established yet. Yep. Do you have any questions? Were you able to review the, um, the zero-based budget spreadsheet that I provided with you? And do you have any questions about that? Um. Let's see. Um, I was just curious as the overtime. Yes. Yep. That we didn't start accounting for that until 2019. What was? It was in regular wage. Uh, no, 2019. It was before 2019. As far as uh, it had its own line item. Yes. Before 20. Oh. Yes, it should have. Before 2017. I'm sorry. Yes. It was. It was incorporated into uh, regular wages. Okay. And you're comfortable with that number? I can I can tell you if things were status quo, it will be tight. I tried to, you know, um, I tried to whittle down everything I possibly could where I felt like, you know, I had some room to play. So yes, with those numbers, yep. with things the way they are, yes. Sometimes in, 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 in this profession, certain things occur that's outside your, your control, such as the pandemic. Um, 
Right. We have several police officers that are involved in the military. Many of them have been activated. Uh, one in particular is a full-time police officer. He was activated several times, and uh, a lot of his hours were were absorbed through overtime when he while he was gone. Yep. Wow. Can I ask, Chief, if the 911 grant funds, are you still getting them and do they apply to the police or to the dispatch? Well, this is this is something that I had um, requested in, in a, in a follow-up letter with that spreadsheet was this year in particular, depending on the year, you never know what happens. So two years prior, we had a dispatcher that was out on an injury for quite a while. So a lot of that the wages through that went through overtime. I was low on wages through dispatch. This year, I'm, I, I see myself low on wages for the police department because of the Reform Act. Uh, I, I'm sorry, not the Reform Act, because of the pandemic itself. Um, and I feel as though if I had, if I somehow could combine the wages between, the, combine the two departments, for instance, when I'm, somebody is, I can use that money, those monies, those, that reimbursement funds into the, the wages of the department if they're combined and I can allocate them to either one versus asking for a request later in the year. Um, so, you know, if, if, if that was something that I, I, I thought might help, one of the questions Ed had asked was, you know, what suggestions may the department has have to, to make things more efficient? And if it means oversight, I understand why you have different line items for oversight, but my uh, current um, administrative uh, information processing through the uh, our, our, our program, I can still subcategorize that so anybody can see exactly where the money's going versus the line items that you see in the uh, monthly um, in the monthly expense reports at request and it's it's a live update it's as, it's as current as can be. Um, I just and and I had a curiosity question because this is um, the the special details. Yes, you you have to coordinate the the billing process with the um, with the companies, correct? I do. I do all the payroll as well as the billing. I will. What I do is I. Through the payroll, I'll, I, I, I formulate the invoices. The invoices then go to the treasurer's, uh, the treasurer's office as well as the accountants and the treasurer's office sends out the actual invoice um, after they uh, tally and yep. realize all the, uh, the, the, um, the payments. And they're, they're pretty responsive as far as getting payment back to us? It, it depends. I have to follow up. You know, one of the biggest culprits is the state. You know, whenever I'm, uh, we're, we're on the phone today with the Mass State DOT relative to bridge inspections because we, um, uh, we haven't gotten payment from them for about six months now. And now we've already contacted them about four times to get payment. Really? Yeah. But How much really, if, if it's local, if it's, if it's a local, um, if it's a local uh, uh, contractor, they come in pretty quick. Uh, other than that, we, we we have to keep we have to keep up on them. I have to have, I have to do a usually a monthly review as to who's not paid. Turn around local if it when I mean local contractors two weeks. Yep. Um, other contractors usually about a month and a half. EverSource is probably our biggest vendor uh, contractor, and their their turnarounds usually about a month and a half. Yep. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. Is there, any, is there any way that we could actually pre-bill, um, have an estimated bill provided to the vendors and collect the money before the duty is provided? We wouldn't be able to do that. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of, um, I don't think that's possible even through the treasurer's office because it, um, the, there's, the billing process is kind of intricate. Because of contractual agreements, you might have a day, for instance, Today, there are several details in Southampton. Well, the snow may have, and I don't know if this is the case, but let's just say it was, it was a detail scheduled for eight hours. But the snow 
force them to cancel two hours. Well, instead of a four hour, uh, an eight hour payment, they would have to pay four hours. So I don't believe, I, I, I don't believe the contractor would ever pay uh, an estimated, to have it in advance, an estimated um, uh, payment without the actual billing. I noticed in the union contract, it's uh, with regards to the private details, it indicates that, that um, we pay the employee who performs the duty as long as there's money in the account. Yes. If there's not money in the account, the town agrees to pay 10 days after they receive the funds from the, the vendor. And I noticed that the, uh, the detail uh, account is in the red, started in the red actually at the beginning of the fiscal year. So my question is, do we pay? Our cops are not waiting for their funds, right? They're not. It's a revolving account. So as the, as it's, as the, um, the, the officers will get paid, and then the check will come uh, about a month, whatever it may be, whenever the turnaround time is usually for that, that vendor, uh, the contractor, then that, that check is cashed. For instance, I have a, ca a check that was received today from Eversource. It's about, uh, I think, $1,100, $1,500. And that was probably from about a job cycle about um, a month and a half ago. Let me just add, I think the reason we're seeing these this being in arrears or in a deficit mm -hmm is because we haven't matched up the revenue with it. The revenue may have come in already. We just don't know it. So all we see is the expense report. So all we see is, is that we have. It's, it's right. that I noticed at the beginning of the fiscal year, it actually was $9,000 yeah, in, in the deficit at the beginning it of the might, fiscal year. Yeah. We and know that, that also doesn't reflect the, the closing of this weird I'm sorry. money up. What's that? And I cut you off. I said that also does not reflect the closing of fiscal year 20. Uh, okay. But we, we do know that there's one that drags along for maybe six months. <laughs> not, not often. Yeah, I have to, we, I definitely have to keep it on, on a monthly basis. I review who has not paid and we, we start making contact with them as the the typical ones, you know, um, I think the one from the state, the DOT, there was a couple bridge inspections that they had on Route 10, and uh, yeah. because, and, and this also very well could be because of the pandemic. I think right. a lot of state employees right now are working from home. I'm sure you got better things to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Than being a collector. <clears throat> uh, okay, any other questions on that first phase? I have another question. Yes. Chief, on the uh, union agreement, the coal line, uh, as I read it really quick, it indicated it's like 2% for the um, the steps. And if someone's at the maximum step, the maximum they will receive is 2% increase. So my question is, when I'm looking at the figures that were reported here uh, for the wages, it shows a 4% growth. So can you Maybe I'm, I misunderstood the union agreement was more for 21 than uh, 2% because these figures show a 4% increase from last year. So they would get a, they would get not only their step increase, but they, let me, uh, are you referring to what it's a 2% a uh, 4%? Oh, I would imagine it's a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's there's training involved. It's not just their annual salary. Okay. So are, you, are you referring okay. to wages? The wage, overtime? Yeah, the wages line. That's yes, it's because there's 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 more to um, uh, the a lot of it's part time officers as well. A lot of it's it's beyond their 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 um, their annual salary as far as the full time police officers go. If I'm if I'm if I'm interpreting your question properly. I, I read the uh, the union contract and it showed the steps for each of the officers and these are full time, not the part time. Mm -hmm. And then it showed, or it said it was one percent, one percent from uh, each of the steps. But if you're at the maximum, it would be a two percent. So I was just trying to match that up to the wages line here mm -hmm. that shows a four percent increase. So sure. if the maximum is two percent on the salaries, then the wage line is higher than that shouldn't it be in the two percent range as it is for the uh for your communications folks that's in line two percent with their contract so i'm just trying to understand the higher rate for the police department wages 
I would suspect the wages itself. So when you look at, if you were to look at, you have that spreadsheet in front of you, perhaps. Mm -hmm. If you were to look at, um, let's say, uh, we'll just say Mark Grover, the first employee behind, uh, beyond me, where it says Mark Grover in this, in, in it, right? So his date of appointment, now it's based on when they get their, their contractual raises and so forth. So those numbers that you have in there are, are accurate numbers as to when he, when he gets his pay increase and what it is. So this also, whenever he gets his pay increase, it also includes a pay increase in their OI, in their, um, whether it's their OIC payment which is officer in charge, it, it will hit, for him it wouldn't be because he's a lieutenant, but for patrol officers it would. It also includes a, um, an FTO, they get an increase in their FTO if they're, if they're a field training officer. It also includes their, an increase in their, um, their wages for, for um, the roll call as well. So they, they're, this is their base salary, but they also have additional income coming in through percentages based on um, the, the, uh, their 15 minutes of roll call that they get every day that they come in, as well as the, the um, and I can show you where that comes from. If you were to go through that packet and you were to look at Hello, this is Sarah. shift differential, you have an additional, well, that wouldn't really include much, but it would be the Part-time wages are included in there as well, and they they um, their wages range from a medium. I have a medium in uh, pay there, but if you were to look at like, I'm trying to figure out where you where you'd see this specifically here. So when you, I have a, a title page, additional regular wages, and it's probably halfway through the packet. Well, you can see where some of these additional costs all are increased because of their, their base pay is increased as well. So um, for instance, the holidays, um, shift differential pay, that's, that's, that's just a straight pay. So that's, that's inclusive, um, that, that's um, contractual. That's not based on percentage. However, th those all add up to it. I can, I can tell you for certain based on this, this formula, every, every dime should pretty much be accounted for. Um, I was just curious, Chief. No, no, I understand. I, I, I understand because you, I think a lot of it has to do with some of the um, the amount of part-time police officers uh, and, and the training. There's also a, additional training here that probably was never realized in the um, in the previous budgets is, you know, for instance, we have the, the taser training. That's an additional eight hours for every officer a year. Um, there's there, there's um, definitely different, the police budget, as you can tell, or the contracts, they're very complicated. There's a lot of different stipulations and, and um, percentages increases in, in, in within that, that, that contract that are not very noticeable until you do the comp the the, uh, the computation of it. I also what I did was, as far as wages went, this is considering that we're still in the pandemic. If not, the training is all online, and it's while they're on their shift. And that was a reduction of about $10,000 of wages should they be getting sent to, to um, training classes. I'd imagine after the pandemic training classes, you know, in-person training classes will, will, will resume. However, if it means cost saving, then they'll have to do them through online courses on their shift. I, I are you comfortable with the quality of that training as compared to actual hands-on? Not necessarily, no. No. 
Not much, not much that can be done though. No, no. I mean, I will say that the in-service training, so there's a requirement of uh, 40 hours of in-service training. I, I should say 24 hours of in-service training a year currently. And that is all online. And I have to say that all the officers seem to be more receptive to the online training than in-person training. Uh, believe it or not, it doesn't seem to, uh, it seems to engage them more than the in-person training. No. So it's the, the, the company that we're using is, is uh, a certified company for the in-service uh, in training. They uh, are doing a really good job at keeping, keeping uh, a quality training remotely. Okay. All right. Any other questions on that? Mary, one of the other increases that you might see is uh, some of these, um, if you were to look at part-time wages or full-time wages, I base, for instance, if you look at the, the part-time wages uh, in the packet, part-time wage, where it's titled part-time wages, and let's say it goes down, and you go down the list and it'll say, show vacation cover, and I'll use statistics from the previous fiscal year to try to project where I'm at this year or where I will be at this year. So um, that increase might have something to do with those numbers as well, based on last fiscal year, as to how many part-time officers are able to cover um, open shifts or officers taking vacation. Um, so that percentage of overtime versus part-time wages may have an effect based on how many part-time officers I can get or when they are qualified to work a certain shift. And it, sometimes it changes throughout the year. This year was a little bit different than last year. Hey, Mary, you good with that? I'm good. Okay. What's the next phase, Chief? I'm sorry? Next phase, we take, I think you had talked about the um, combining the, the uh, two oh, groups. No, it was just a suggestion that if, so through the state 911 department, I can, I, provided that we get the grant, provided that I obtain the grant, um, and there's certain qualifications and standards that have to be met to, to meet the grant. There's a typically a training grant for dispatchers, as well as a, it's called a support and incentive grant. And the support and incentive grant can be based on um, equipment needs sometimes, and it can also be based on wages. Typically based because of, for instance, last year um, of the uh, reduction in my budget, I specifically requested wages knowing that I very well likely may need these wages in, in, uh, for this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So when I put in for the grant, I received, um, I, I specifically asked for wages. And I'm hoping next year, this year, there was a 30,000, I got a 30,000 up to $30,800 in reimbursement wages. Um, next year, I, I facilitated allowing our department to get more 911 calls. We incorporated cell towers throughout the, um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the area. So we received more 911 calls as a result now. I'm hoping that has a positive effect on the grant status that maybe it'll increase the grant, but I don't know. And these grants aren't guaranteed. Right. Okay, so, so it's probably something we should be looking at perhaps next year for the com combination of the budgets yeah. is that, I mean, I, I personally would like that. I understand that there, you know, some people might consider there's some oversight that they want to see. I, yeah. I get that hundred percent. However, I, I do have the, through my, the, the um, uh, platform through uh, my, my computer aided dispatch and computer aided uh, police program, I can 
subcategorize that and give a report specifically as to what is going towards dispatch expenses, what's going towards police expenses, what's going towards police wages and, and so forth. But I do feel like that may give me some uh, leeway, if you will, when things do get tight, I do expect them to get tight. Where in the, I won't have to go to town meeting in the latter part of the year and ask for a request of, to transfer money. Okay. Well, you don't have to go to town meeting for that anyway. You just got to go to the finance committee and the select board. But they're harder than the town meeting. <laughs> Ouch. I was just going to say, be nice, Ed. <laughs> and, and actually, there, there's one other way to do it. And it has to do with how town meeting actually votes on the budget. Oh, uh, actually has to flow through the moderator, but for next year's budget, I, I intend to see if I can get some changes through. So you know, for, for example, instead they go through and basically, you know, look at them and how they're presented. But if you, if you can, if you, Town meeting voted on them in little in some subcategories. Uh, if, for example, overtime wages, police wages, dispatch wages, uh, you know, were all combined in a subsection, they could still have those four uh, subcategories to them. But what was basically voted on by town meeting was those four or five categories combined together. Well, then as long as you don't exceed that dollar amount for those four or five categories, uh, you're okay. You don't have to look at transferring between the individual accounts. And we just lost a bunch of people. Yeah, do you have all your, your you have yeah. a, a quorum? I think we got a little power surge. We got a little power surge here. So. If, yeah. yeah, I was wondering if there's a, a either power outage or a uh, internet outage. Yeah, I think we're missing, uh, missing. Yeah. And yes, you're correct. The finance committee does not now have a quorum. Oh, yeah, Barbara's gone too. Oh. Yeah. Are they trying to get back in? Not yet. I'm going to text Francine and see if they had a power outage. She's not going to help our quorum. To figure, she's not going to help your quorum. No, maybe you can figure out what's going on. Right. Chief, while we're waiting, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, not financial. Um, ballistic vests, are these, are they worn all the time? Yes. In fact, we're required to wear them under most circumstances in order to obtain this grant. Um, relative to the uh, additional money. So there's a federal grant that I applied for and I received, and it's a three-year grant. Usually the Usually the um, shelf life of a vest is about five years. After five years, it should be replaced because the fibers start breaking down and it loses its, its, uh, its ability to, to protect. So we have several officers now that are entering that cycle of replacement. And that the federal grant that I applied for that I received only pays 50% of it. And a vest is about $1,000 a piece. Wow. Hmm. 
So every 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 officer, every time he puts on his uniform, he's putting on a vest as well. When they're on duty, yes. If they're on traffic details, it's not required. If they're in a plain clothes detail where let's say they're at training or they're um, might be working with a particular task force and they can't have one, then maybe not, but otherwise they have to have one on. If they're in the cruiser, they've got them on. Yeah, they, yes, yes, that's, a, that's actually a department policy. Yep, okay, that was just a curiosity question. Uh, well, we got Mary back. Yep, so you're back to a quorum at least. So we're, yep, okay. And uh, Francine said they did lose power. Oh, all right, okay. Okay, um, Chief. Any other any other uh, narrative comments? No, I, I think that's it. I um, I just you know I ask that when you have the opportunity. I know it's a lot of paperwork. If you could go through those uh, those spreadsheets if you haven't already, just to show you know exactly where the the requests are coming from. I, yeah. I tried to make it as. Um, understandable and convenient as possible for you you folks to make an assessment. And thorough, no question. If I just have a question on the yes. ballistic vests, is it 10 or 12 that you're looking for? Um, it should be, um, let me, I think it would be. How much sheets have different amounts on them? Okay, let me see what we have here. I wanna say, well, it would be. It says 12 in the summary. It should be 12. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 12 then. <clears throat> okay. All right, any other <laughs> questions from, from the committee? Well, if not, Chief, you're free to go. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. All right, thank you, you for me. Feel free to give me a call or, or reach out to me if anybody has any questions where, you know, I can provide any further explanation. Okay. Great. Stay safe. Yes, you too. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Thank you. We're back to um, just committee now. Any thoughts, comments? I was very thorough, very clear. And Chief Ellingsworth is our most detailed department head, in my opinion. Yeah, I, that, that that was that was pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Knows his stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Well, we uh, I sent up the uh, email after I heard from Lucy, so uh, I took it upon myself to to make the determination that we're probably going to be cramped for Wednesday. So I think we would probably want to add her to the next available day, which would be the first. If everybody. Awesome. That. Um, do we have any other um, departments that we want to uh, set up at this point? What are your thoughts? Highway's the only other one that's ready. Yep. And that, that I think probably would be a lengthy one. Yes, it would. Would much much like police and fire. No, yep. we've already got fire set up, right? Is the on right there on Wednesday? They're on Wednesday. Yep. So, which ones are we seeing on Wednesday? Um, Council on Aging, the library, and um, fire. fire. And then we're going to see Lucy and who on the first? 
right now it's just Lucy. We haven't got anybody else set for the first yet. Oh, hi. I was thinking of putting highway on the first because they're ready. Okay. That sounds good. All right. So we got Lucy on the first and uh, highway. March. And board, board of Health voted on their budget on Thursday. I was supposed to see it today. I didn't. So I will uh ask jerry to send me that with the backup on it uh and then the other one you might consider even though she hasn't sent the backup you might consider the treasurer collectors uh department o only because uh not only does jen do the treasurer collectors department but also does a good amount of the input into the spreadsheet for employee benefits, which has retirement, uh, health insurance, uh, and, and some other factors, which are big dollar amounts and have potential to have large increases in them. So I'll, I'll ask her if she's got her back up uh, tomorrow, and but keep that one in the back of your mind for uh, possibility for uh, the first. Next one also. Okay. All right, so we'll go. Oh, Ian must have forgot something. He went back in. Thanks, Ed. Yes, sir. You're welcome. You missed your opportunity. I just told them to give all the money to the fire department. Uh, did I did I lose Mary? Because I had a, a response to Mary's question. She stumped me on that for a minute, and I was trying to uh. think to myself, why is it, why is it such a difference for the police and uh, dispatch? And then I realized that the main difference I'd like to explain to her, but uh, it looks like I I, I might have lost her. She's not on. Wonder if she lost her power now. As you came in, Barbara and Mary, I kicked out again they must have lost their power again yeah is there a question it was a very valid question i didn't answer it the way i wanted to but then i realized afterwards precisely what what the cause is so Yeah, I'll wait a few minutes and we'll see if they get back in again. Well, I hear the plows out. They just drove by. Yeah, yeah they, drove, they drove by here a little while. A while ago. Didn't start snowing again, did it? I don't know. I don't think so. Hopefully not. Doesn't look like it. No, that's no one. That was the dispatcher reporting that there was some power outages in the Glendale Road area. Hmm. That's, that's where Francine is. I don't know where Barbara or Mary live. No. So what does this do to our process now if they don't come back in? We'll give it a few minutes and otherwise your meeting will have officially ended due to a lack of a quorum at basically around 
Oh, here's Mary back. Good. Mary, the Hi again, Mary. Are you guys losing power too, or is it only me? No, just you, you and Barbara. <laughs> you and Barbara, and and Francine too. Francine oh. hasn't been able to get back. Oh. But but she's not in the quorum <coughs> amount. But no, but she, she doesn't count towards the quorum. Explicitly with the answer to your question, Mary. What was my question? <laughs> really? I forgot. <laughs> I remember because I couldn't answer it as well as I wanted to. So it was about the 4% increase with the police and, and two for the dispatch. So one of the things that the, they will get, they're on certain steps. So our dispatchers, there's four full-time dispatchers. Four, three of those four are maxed out right now. So they're actually not getting much of a raise at all. Most of the police officers, with the exception of one right now, I believe, is not maxed out in steps. So not only does he get the call, he gets a step increase, which would explain the 4%, the, 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 the more of a, a percentage increase in wages over the dispatch. So the, between the steps, is it a 1% difference between no, each? No, no. It, 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 um, the police, it's... I'll give, I'll, this is, the police... Payment schedule is very similar to the dispatch schedule, and I don't have the police directly in front of me. It's somewhere in my paperwork here. But for instance, a step two, um, so they'll get their step as well as their, there's a COLA as well involved in that as well. So that that explains where the that extra increase is, where the, the dispatchers, so they'll get, it's actually, between fiscal years, it can be up to 4%, depending on, on, on the step itself. So a fiscal year step three dispatcher in fiscal year 20 was at 1860 an hour. A, they then increase a step after the year, and in fiscal year 21, their pay is 1993. So it's a significant, um, because they'd be, then be a step uh, 1990, uh, 1935 rather. So there's a significant step based on their step as well as the 2% COLA. So that explains where, where that, that increase is. It's because most dispatchers are, are, are maxed out in their step increases. They're all at the last step right now with the exception of one where the police, I think there's only one full-time police officer that right now that's maxed out on steps. So he only gets the COLA. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Does that help a little bit more with that? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. All right. You, you, you got me, Mary. I want to make sure I got, got an opportunity to explain that. Thank you. Thanks for coming back, Chief. Appreciate All right. it. All right. Take care. Mary, I'll see, I'll see if I can find the Excel spreadsheets that, I, that we had done when we settled the last contract. Because if I do have them, it'll actually show you the percentage difference between the steps. Thank you. And if I can find them, I'll send them to you, to Ed, all of you. Ed, with you, uh, you know, involved in the contract, does my explanation sound, um, do, you ex do you understand what my explanation was as far as the difference between the step increase and then the COLA? Yeah, yeah, I like this explanation much better than the, the earlier one. Yeah, I, well, again, I was trying to figure out why. And then I, as soon as I get off, I'm thinking, that just doesn't seem to add up for me is just what, what I told you it should be less than that. And then, then I realized it and well, here I am. <laughs> okay. Well, especially, yeah, especially since I knew the, uh, the, the Quinville equivalent is in a separate line item. So I, I knew that couldn't be part no, that, of it. Yeah. And, and, and what happened was knowing that the figures are, I, I'm, 100% confident that those figures are accurate as far as the salaries based on, on, on the, the platform that I used. I just wanted to be able to explain it better to you. And I, hopefully I, 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 that happened. So sleep better tonight. And, and I, I will, I will, I yeah. hope. And, and, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Thanks All right. again. Stay, too. stay healthy, everybody. You too. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> uh, Francine, when you were out, uh, just to so you can update your um, tracking schedule. Okay. Uh, we set the highway department for the 1st of March. Okay. Town clerk for the 1st of March and tentatively um, Jennifer, treasurer collector for okay. March 1st. All right. C can I make a suggestion? Certainly. The, I think it would be helpful for discussion purposes if we were able, if we shared the document so that we were all looking at the right, at the page as he was, as they are talking. I know we all have our own copies, but I'm not sure that that's exactly where they are in their conversation with us. Do you know what I'm saying? They can take us right to the right spot if we are able to share the documents that they submit. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes, it does to me. Um, Mary, what about you? No, we can actually share. Uh, I mean, if, she, uh, if you care, if you want to share your screen, you can share it or I can share the screen and we can actually bring their submission up right. and when they right. can work it through. Right. And so we can actually, we're all, I mean, literally on the same page. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Oh, Fran and scene. What a pun. I know. <laughs> I will I will defer to somebody else to to share their screen, being technologically challenged. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Mary, you can. Oh, and uh, do that with before yours. Before you sign off tonight, I wasn't going to say anything at the time, but uh, I will let you know that Mary was correct when she actually asked the board of assessors if they. We're not actually following the uh, instructions and gets into a little bit of a gray area because my instructions were level five plus contractual increases. So theoretically they have a, had a one-time cost for the triannual, which is actually every five years now, uh, evaluation being done of $8,000, which dropped off this year that they could argue uh, was available funds to technically level fund. I might look at that a little differently depending on what mood I'm in. Uh, but the, the other two pieces that I will say is actually everyone, everyone was told not to include uh, colas, that the co any colas for non-union personnel would be uh, basically talked about and decided between Select board and the finance committee, and I will I will tell you because uh, there's been, in my opinion, there's too many years that the unions have ended up with them because of the negotiation and bargaining. It's in the contracts. We come down to the end, uh, and uh, of the three years, two of those years I've been here, the non-union personnel didn't get cola, and I think that's one of the reasons we uh, can be a excuse the expression, revolving door. Uh, and then, uh, you know, so I'm very heavily lobbying board that, you know, m what my first prioritization of any extra money or available money is we really need to do a COLA, whether that's one and a half or 2% or whatever it comes out to be to the non-union personnel this year. And, and then another thing I'll just call your attention to uh, is currently the Board of Assessors has a, an administrative assistant or an administrative clerk funded in their department. It is not an assistant assessor. And I would probably be my opinion for a community this size uh, that we really don't require an assistant assessor, but that's my opinion. They still would have to go through the PPP, right? To have that position reviewed, the assistant, the admin one that they have right now, if they're looking to make that as an assistant uh, assessor, they would have to have- Well, I mean, yeah, that's still, they would, they, would have, they would have to have that rated as 
an assistant assessor, uh, number one. Uh, then number two, it actually as a PR, well, I'm just gonna go to the PCF form, uh, which when they were actually looking to hire the position uh, would have to be signed off and approved by the select board. I kind of an opinion, I don't know what they'll do, but I would think that they might take about three looks at it uh, before they approve that. And then even at the PRF end, if they wanted to actually ask to post for it, um, P PRS for posting, uh, require both finance and select board approvals uh, in addition to uh, the, uh, the PPPB. So, um, and just a, a question on the COLA. Is that, that's an ongoing? So in other words, if it's issued for 20, 22, does it stay in the employee's base pay in 2023? Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay, so any of these requests have just been wishful thinking because there's been no, no comment. Well, any, any of them that ha actually have colas in that, uh, at least that tab one of the budget, I would say, wishful thinking at that point. Yep, okay. And does the, pardon my ignorance here, does the PQB get involved in that at all? The COLAs? Yeah. No. No. That's that, that COLAs for non-union employees are uh, basically select board and finance committee. Uh, okay. You know, but one of the things, though, that um, Rini, who's the chair of the select board, has been asking is that we update the scales. Right. The old one that they've been using that's dated 2017 that the PQB is using, and then art study also, which was dated, the new one is dated, what, February 2020, just a year ago, but right. updating that so that that becomes information that's part of any decision-making process. I mean, if we don't know what the numbers are, you know, we're not gonna know what the impact might be if we, we do um, try to upgrade some, some of the positions. Or, to or work towards a goal of bringing people up because there's some people who are so far below the minimum of the salary study. Anyway, you'll see. But there have been there have been two two percent cola increases since right. that seventeen study, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry, but it's I have to leave. Low, two percent stays just still keeps it low. Take care, Robert. I have to leave. Sorry. Okay, Robert. We're still got a quorum though. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess that was, oh, we had to have a vote on approving the minutes of the uh, February 8th meeting. Are your motion? I'll make it. <laughs> I move that we accept the, the minutes uh, as drawn up for February, the uh, meeting of February 8, 2021. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Mary, aye. Rachel? I believe, I believe I have to abstain. I was not present, so. Okay. All right. It's so voted. Any other issues to come before the uh, committee? Any other comments? If I not, don't have, I yes. don't have um, uh, any, I just have a, a question, I guess a clarification question. With this entire process, I, I really appreciate that everyone's coming to present their budgets to us, but what exactly does our 
I, I'm accustomed to getting something from accounting that shows what projected revenues would be and making sure that all the expenses, the associated expenses are, are able to, like the rev, projected revenues are able to handle those projected expenses and sure. seeing it from that perspective. And it seems like um, I'm not exactly sure what our specific purview is, I guess, is the finance committee and with this with this process. I'm not sure I'm, I don't know if I'm expressing it correctly. Well, well that's one of the things that uh, Regina and I will have to put together as an estimate for fiscal year 22. And it's the other piece of the puzzle that we look at uh, when it comes to the recommendations is, okay, w within our revenues, can we fulfill everything in budget requests tab one for everyone and not need to go into operational stabilization or uh, ask for a proposition two and a half uh, override if you know everyone thought that everything that was in those requests was fair and reasonable uh, then piece, piece two or path two may be okay if there's not enough does the select board and or finance committee uh, wish to use any operational stabilization to get to budget one uh, and or a position two and a half uh, override, or once you've got enough funding to do that budget tab one, does the select board and or finance committee want to consider using operational stabilization and or proposition two and a half to fund any of the additional requests that happen to be in budget tab two. But the first part of the puzzle obviously is getting um, we're getting expenses to look at expenses as they compare to previous year, previous couple of years and, and making that preliminary um, preliminary decision the decision based on where the departments are projecting their expenses going and then that's going to be further determined by the revenues in the in the at another date the revenues being there to cover those expenses so i, I understand what Rachel uh, mean, that it's you only got one piece of the puzzle but We've got to deal with that one piece initially. Right. Yeah, and, and, and to some extent, you can get. Go ahead, Ed. Sorry. No, that's OK. Go ahead. No, I just in looking at the town clerk and the assessor, they're, you know, they're, they're secondary budget. Both of them have like 20 percent increases, increase, you know, overall increase from the prior year. You know, if we keep getting. 20%, 20%, 20% from everyone. I mean, I know that's that's their their budget that they they're hopeful for, but kind of would need something in the middle, you know, between this level level funding and um, pie in the sky dreams. Yeah. Can I just add something here? Because uh, those two positions, I think most of the increases are in the salary lines for both of those budgets, mm -hmm. and those are two of the positions that are so below the scale that everyone has access to that I think they're hoping, you know, and I guess the, as the assessors presented, they are hoping to also bring that in line with comparable positions within town hall. Right. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen. It just means that they're aspiring to that. Um, and it may well be when we, after all this is said and done that you may we may have to have uh, you may have to ask other some of them to come back 
to talk about what they could live without. Mm. Because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure we're never going to be able to meet everyone's expectations. Right. No, I'm, 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 I'm thinking maybe we might be able to do that budget tab one and a few extra things, but I don't think we're going to going to be anywhere near of being able to fund everything that's in everyone budget tab two or close right. to it. I have a question though. If some of the agencies are already including colas in their tab one, and they shouldn't, so when we're compiling it, their increase is already going to be built into that bottom line. So shouldn't they go back? No, to I, will, I will. I will. I will. When I when I create a master list, I would take them out. All right. So, Ed, when we, when we bring in Jen, is she going to be yep. anywhere near being able to tell us what to expect for revenues? No, you're, you're going to get revenues from me and Regina, not from Jen. Oh, okay. You're, you're gonna gonna look to Jen is on both the treasurer collector budget and the employee benefit budget. Okay, so it's, we're just on the expense side still with her. Correct. Okay. And and that being the case, any idea what your timeline is with the Regina for that revenue projections? Probably in about two, and, and to some extent, it's a little bit of guesswork because what we're going to do is we're going to work off the governor's house one budget as far as uh, the, uh, the the state aid goes, and that can change, can go up or down a little bit as the house comes out with theirs and the senate comes out with theirs, but theirs usually comes out. Uh, late enough that you really can't utilize it anyway. Okay. All right. I think we've probably had enough for tonight. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, especially when we only hit two departments and we've still gone two hours almost. And we're going to be seeing a lot of one another. Yeah, I mean, Yes. I mean, in, in, in general, and one of the things that I was going to say, you might want to think about uh, as you line these up is you, you may also want to actually put some time constraints on them. Uh, also, you know, going forward and saying, okay, Department A is coming, is scheduled for 530. Maybe Department B is scheduled for six. And then Department C is scheduled for maybe 6.30. And I, I would look at it as probably a lot like you had tonight. I think it was a decent lineup because I would, you know, say that like the town clerk and the assessors aren't o overly complicated right. budgets with a lot of line, different line items and um, different services in them. Uh, so I, I would think that half an hour is a good time schedule to go through them uh, and have them present and ask questions. When you get into police, highway, fire EMS, um, and, and those large ones, uh, I, I would I would think it would, might be closer to an hour for them. Yep. All right, if nothing else, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move. I motion to adjourn. I second. Move and second it. All in favor? <laughs> it's unanimous.
All well, right. thank you all. Yes, we're done. And we'll see you again on Wednesday night. All right. yes. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Take care. See ya.